Well, speaking sure. of rising interest rates, how does that impact the rental market and the housing market? Joining us now, Dallas Tanner, CEO of Invitation Homes. Dallas, great to have you on overtime. Um, I, I do want to start with some of this macro data that we have gotten, including PCE this morning, uh, where shelter prices are such a big part of the services component, and we see them rent prices uh, staying, staying elevated. Um, a lot of folks on Wall Street are saying, hey, listen, this data is lagging, disinflation is here, you can't count on that. It goes back to the conversation we were just having with Steve about, about the Fed. What are you seeing in the rental market in real time right now? Well, rate certainly isn't as elevated uh, as it was this time last year. I think we are still seeing a consumer uh, that lines up with all the points made previously in the program that is really healthy. Um, our rent to income ratios and metrics that we look at on incoming customers have been about as strong as they've been the last three years. That being said, I do believe the market's coming down uh, to more normalized levels. It's still elevated, uh, to be clear. There's plenty of demand for product. And I think it speaks more to some of the supply challenges in housing. Um, there's a lot of different metrics you can look at. But bottom line, we just don't have enough housing units in this country. We need to find ways to build more. Yeah. So, so how are you managing that from a supply standpoint? Because last quarter, you were actually a net seller. But I know you've also inked some deals with home builders like Pulte Group to, to bring uh, more inventory onto your own portfolio. Yeah, there, there's no doubt. I mean, people want choice. And about two-thirds of the country are going to own something and about a third of the country want to lease something for a variety of reasons. We are continually finding ways to invest creatively in new communities and build new communities with both national partners like Pulte and other regional builders uh, across our 16 markets. We view that new home product as something that is extremely attractive to our customer. They can be down payment light and they can get into a brand new community of access to better schools and, and amenities. And so we view that as a, a continuing option for people as the market evolves and gets more sophisticated that people just want choice and it doesn't always have to be an apartment it can definitely be a single family home okay dallas tell me is employment the key to a continued strong rental market in single family for you i mean it it seems like uh, inventory is so low you're buying and selling for around three hundred fifty thousand per you know plus minus which seems to be historically very high is it that people are remaining employed and being paid more is that what allows you to keep these penciling out well i think we've seen in our wage data as people have come into the portfolio the last several years we've seen wage creep for sure in terms of call it the average uh invitation homes customer that customer today is typically two earners has a household combined income of probably somewhere around one hundred and forty thousand dollars. And typically that's a, an opportunity where mom and dad are both working or, and yeah. there's, you know, one to two children in the home. Um, Dallas, they're, they're really we've got, I'm going to break, I'm going to break in right here for a moment. We've got some breaking news out of the treasury department. We just want to get to Kayla Tausche with those details. Hi, Kayla. Hi, Morgan. Secretary of the Treasury Janet Yellen sending another letter to Congress updating the date after which Treasury would not be able to pay its bills to June 5th from the prior estimate of June 1st. Secretary Yellen in this letter to leadership says that Treasury will plan to go ahead with about $130 billion in scheduled payments covering Social Security and military benefits and other things the first two days of June. But then starting the week of June 5th, Treasury will face obligations of about $92 billion and would have insufficient resources to cover those bills. Again, she is urging Congress to reach a deal to, to raise the debt limit uh, and avoid any potentially catastrophic outcomes. Uh, but June 5th is the new date as we're getting no signs here at the White House of a deal brewing. Both sides of Pennsylvania Avenue see negotiators huddling, figuring out next steps. Pessimism is abounding that we would see anything by the end of the day today. And as far as what the government's finances look, we should also note that Treasury's borrowing capacity, according to the agency's funding statement, its most recent statement, is just $67 billion as of today. So, um, you know, we will see what happens over the next week. But Janet Yellen just bought negotiators four extra days to get a deal done. All right. Guys. Kayla Tausche, thank you. Got to wonder how how aggressively folks are going to be working over the weekends now. Dallas, uh, uh, appreciate your patience here. Uh, to circle back on the conversation we were just having, though, we have mortgage rates hitting 7% again today. Uh, I got to think that's a tailwind for your business. Yeah, the differential between what it costs to own versus what it costs to lease in our markets, kind of similar footprints, about $900 cheaper. 
on a monthly basis for our customers to, to lease than, than to own in today's market. And I think you're right. I think it's a tailwind for anyone that's sitting uh, in a position of being a real estate operator just because of those natural headwinds that are impeding new supply coming into the market. And mortgage rates are certainly not helping anything. All right. Dallas Tanner, thanks for joining us.